Queen 3, Warkworth Castle, and Sir Hotspur Solis reading a letter. But for mine own part, my lord, I could be well contented to be there in respect of the love I bear your house. He could be contented. Why is he not then? In the respect of the love he bears our house, he shows in this. He loves his own barn better than uh, he loves our house. Let, let me see some more. The purpose you undertake is dangerous. Oh, why, that's over, that's certain. Tis dangerous to take a cold, to sleep, to drink. But I tell you, my lord, to fool out of this nettle, danger, we pluck this flower, safety. The uh, purpose you undertake is dangerous. The friends you have named uncertain, the time is self unsorted, and your whole plot is too light for the counterpoise of so great an opposition. Ah, say you so, say you so. I, I say unto you again, you are a shallow, cowardly hind, and you lie. What a lack brain is this? By the Lord, not the, the plot as good, as good plot as ever was made. <laughs> Our friends true and constant. It's a good plot. Our good friends and full of expectations. An excellent plot. Very good friends. What a frosty spirited rogue is this. Why, my Lord of York commends the plot and the general course of the action. Soons, and I wear her now by this rascal. I would brain him with his lady's fan. <laughs> is there not my father, my uncle, and myself? Lord Edmund, Mortimer, my uh, Lord of York, and Owen Glendar, is there not for besides the, the Douglas? Have I not all that the letters to meet me in arms of the ninth of the next month? And are they not some of them set forward to already? What a pagan rascal is this? An infidel! Ha! You shall see now in very sincerity of fear and cold heart will he to the king and lay open all our proceedings. Oh, I would deride myself and go to buffets for moving such a dish of skim milk with so honorable an action. Hang him! Let him tell the king we are prepared. I will set forward tonight. How now, Kate? I must leave you within these two hours. Oh, my good lord, why are you thus alone? Huh? For what offense have I this fortnight been a banished woman from my Harry's bed? Tell me, sweet lord, what is it that takes from thee thy stomach, pleasure, and by thy golden sleep? Why dost thou bend thine eyes upon the earth and start so often when thou sitst alone? Why hast thou lost the fresh blood in thy cheeks, and given my treasures and my rights of thee to thick-eyed musing and cursed melancholy? In thy faint slumbers I by thee have watched and heard thee murmur tales of iron wars, speak terms of manage to thy bounding steed, cry courage to the field, and thou hast talked of sallies and retires, of trenches, tents, of palisades, frontiers, parapets, of basilisks, of cannon, culverin, of prisoners of ransom, and of soldiers slain, and of all the currents of a heady fight. Thy spirit within thee hath been so at war, and thus hath so bestirred thee in thy sleep. The beads of sweat have stood upon thy brow, like bubbles in a late disturbed stream, and in thy face strange motions have appeared, such as we see when men restraineth their breath on some great sudden heist. Oh, what portents are these? Some heavy business has my lord at hand, and I must know else he loves me not. What oh? Is Gilliams with the packet gone? Yes, my lord, an hour ago. Hath Butler bought these horses from the sheriff? One horse, my lord, he brought even now. What horse? Rowan? Rowan, a, a crop ear, is it not? It is, my lord. That Rowan shall be my throne. Well, I will back him straight. Oh, experience! The did butler lead him forth into the park. But hear you, my lord. What say so, my lady? What is it that carries you away? Why, my horse, my love, my horse. 
Out, you mad-headed ape! A weasel hath not such a deal of spleen as you are host with. In faith, I know your business, Harry, that I will. I fear my brother Mortimer doth stir about his title and has set for you to lime his enterprise. But if you go... So far afoot, I shall be weary, love. Come, come, ye paraquito. Answer me directly unto this question that I ask. In faith, I'll break thy little finger, Henry. For if thou wilt not tell me all things true... Away, away, you trifler. Love, I know thee not, and I care not for thee, Kate. This is no world to play with mammoths and to tilt with the lips, and we must have bloody noses and cracked crowns and pass them the current too. God's me, my horse! What sayest thou, Kate? What wouldst thou have with me? Do you not love me? Do you not indeed? Well, do not then. For since you love me not, I will not love myself. Do you not love me? Nay, tell me if you speak in jest or no. Come, wilt thou not wilt thou see me ride? And when I am a horseback, I will swear I love thee infinitely. But hark you, Kate. I must not have you henceforth question me whither I go, nor reason whereabout. Whither I must, I must. And to conclude this evening, must I leave you, gentle Kate? I know you wise, yet, but yet no farther wise than Harry Perse, Percy's wife, constant you are. But yet a woman, and for secrecy, no lady closer, but I, for I will believe, I will believe that thou wilt not utter what thou dost not know. And so far will I trust thee, gentle Kate. How? So far? Not an inch farther, further. But hark you, Kate, uh, but whither I go, thither shall you go too. Today will I set forth, tomorrow you. Will this content you, Kate? It must of force. Huh. Scene four, the Boar's Head Tavern in East Cheap. Enter Prince Henry and Poyne. Ned, prithee, come out of that fat room and lend me thy hand to laugh a little. <laughs> Where hast thou been, Hal? With three or four loggerheads amongst three or four score hogsheads. I have sounded the very bass string of humility. Sirrah, I am sworn brother to the leash of drawers, and I can call them all by their Christian names as Tom Dick and Francis, they take it already upon their salvation that though I be but the Prince of Wales, yet I am king of courtesy, and I tell them flatly I am no proud Jack and false staff, but a Corinthian, a lad of metal, and a good boy by the Lord, so they call me. And when I am king of England, I shall command all good lads in Eastcheap. They call drinking deep, dying scarlet. And when you breathe in your watering, they cry, hem, and bid you play it off. To conclude, I am so proficient in one quarter of an hour that I can drink with any tinker of his own language during my life. I tell thee not, Ned, thou not hast not lost much honor that thou wert not with me in this sweet action. But, sweet Ned, to sweet which name of, of Ned, I give thee this pennyworth of sugar clapped even now in my hand by an under-skinker, one that never spake other English in his life than eight shillings and sixpence, and you are welcome with this shrill addition. Anon and on, sir. Score a pint of bastard in the half moon or so. But Ned, to this drive, away the time till Falstaff come, I prithee. Do thou stand in some by room while I question my puny drawer to what end he gave me the sugar, and do thou never leave calling Francis that his tale to me may sound nothing but anon. Step aside, I'll show thee a precedent. Francis. Thou art perfect. Francis. <laughs> anon, anon, sir, I'll look down into the barrel Come hither, Francis. My lord. How long hast thou to serve, Francis? Uh, forsooth, five years, and as much as to be a... Francis! 
Oh, Anon, sir, Anon. Five year, by my lady, these long lease for the clinking of pewter. But Francis, darest thou be so valiant as to play the coward with thy indenture and show it a fair pair of heels and run from it? Oh, Lord, sir, I'll be sworn upon all the books in England I could find in my heart. I Francis. Th Oh, Anon, Anon, sir. How old art thou, Francis? Oh, let me see. Uh, about Michael Mass next, I I shall be... Um, um, Francis! Oh, Anon, sir. Uh, fear you. Stay a while, my lord. Nay, uh, but hark you, Francis. For the sugar thou gavest me was twas a penny's worth, was it not? Oh, Lord, sir, I would it had been two. I'll give you three for a thousandth pound. Ask me when thou wilt, and thou shalt have it. Francis! Oh, Anon! Anon! <laughs> anon, Francis? No, Francis, but tomorrow, Francis, or Francis, a Thursday. Or indeed, Francis, when thou wilt, but Francis... My lord? Mm -hmm. Wilt thou rob this leather jerkin, crystal button, not pated, agate oh. ring, puke oh. stocking, Caddis garter, sm smooth tongue, Spanish pouch. Oh, Lord, sir, what do you mean? Why, then, your brown bastard is your only drink. For look you, Francis, your white canvas doublet will sully. In Barbary, sir, it cannot come to so much. Oh, what, sir? Francis! Away, <laughs> you rogue! Dost thou not hear them call? Oh, Oh, Anon, Anon. What, stand thou still and here's to such a calling? Look to the gas within. Oh, my lord, Sir John, with half a dozen more are at the door. Shall I let them in? Let them alone a while and then open the door. Points. Anon, Anon, sir. Sirrah, Falstaff and the rest of the thieves are at the door. Shall we be merry? As merry as crickets, my lord. But hark ye, what cunning match have you made with this jest of the drawer? Come, what's the issue? I am now in of all humors that have showed themselves humors since the old days of good man Adam to the pupil age of this present twelve o'clock at midnight. What's o'clock, Francis? Anon, 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 sir. Anon. <laughs> Sorry. That, that ever... <laughs> That ever this fellow should have fewer words than a parrot, and yet the son of a woman. His industry is upstairs and downstairs, his eloquence the parcel of a reckoning. I am not yet of Percy's mind, the hot spur of the north. He that kills me some six or seven dozen of Scots at a breakfast, washes his hands, and says to his wife, Fie upon this quiet life, I want work. Oh, my sweet Henry, she says. How many hast thou killed today? Give my roan horse a drench, says he, and answers, Some fourteen an hour after. A trifle, a trifle. I prithee call in Falstaff. I play Percy, and that damned brawn shall play Dame Mortimer, his wife. Rivo, says the drunkard, call in the ribs, call in tallow. Welcome, Jack. Where hast thou been? A plague of all cowards. I say it a vengeance to Mary and I. Amen. Give me a cup of sack, boy. Ere I lead this life long out, so neither stocks and mend them and foot them too. A plague of all cowards. Give me a cup of sack, rogue. Is there no virtue extant? <sighs> thou ever see Titan kiss a dish of butter? Pitiful mm -hmm. hearted titan that melted at the sweet tail of the suns if thou didst then behold that compound you rogue there's lime in the sack too there's nothing but roguery to be found in villainous men yet a coward is worse than a cup of sack with lime in it a villainous coward go thy way so jack die when thou wilt if manhood good manhood be not forgot upon the face of the earth then I am a shotten herring. There live not three good men unhanged in England, and one of them is fat and grows old. God help the wire. A bad world, I say. 
I would I were a weaver. I could sing palm psalms or anything. Plague of all cowards, I say still. How now, will sack what mutters you? A king's son, if I do not beat thee out of thy kingdom with a dagger of lath and drive all thy subjects afore thee like a flock of wild geese, I'll never wear hair on my face more. You, prince of Wales. Why, you whoresome round man, what's the matter? Are you not a coward? Answer me to that, and points there. Bounds, you fat punch, and ye call me coward. By the Lord, I'll stab thee. I call thee coward. I'll see thee hang. Damn, there I call thee coward, and yet I would give a thousand pounds. I could run as fast as thou can. You are straight enough in the shoulders. You care not who sees your back. Call you that backing of your friend? A plague upon such backing. Give me them that will face me. Give me a cup of sack. I'm a rogue if I drunk today. Oh, villain. Thou lips are scarce wiped since thou drunkest last. Oh, it's one for that. <sighs> a plague of all cowards. Still, I say. What's the matter? What's the matter? <laughs> there be four of us here have taken a thousand pound this day morning. Where is it, Jack? Where is it? Where is it? Taken from us. A hundred upon poor four of us. What? A hundred men? I am a rogue if I were not a half cord with a dozen of them two hours together. I have escaped by miracle. I am eight times thrust through the doublet, four through the hose, my buckler cut through and through, my sword hacked like a hacked handsaw, et signum. I never dealt better since I was a man. All would not do. A plague of all cowards. Let them speak. If they speak more or less than truth, they are villains and the sons of darkness. Speak, sirs. How was it? We four set upon some dozen. Sixteen at least, my lord. And bound them. Oh, no, they were not bound. You rogue. They were bound, every man of them, or I am a Jew else, an Hebrew Jew. As we were sharing, some six or seven fresh men set upon us. And unbound the rest, and then come in the other. What? Fought you with them all? All, I know not what to call all, but if I fought not with fifty of them, I am a bunch of radish. If there were but not two or three and fifty upon poor old Jack, then I am no two-legged creature. Pray God you have not murdered some of them. Nay, that's past praying for. I've peppered two of them. Two I am sure I've paid. Two rogues in buckram suits. I'll tell thee what, Al. If I tell thee a lie, spit in my face and call me whore. <laughs> Thou knowest my old ward here. I lay, and thus I bore my point. Four rogues in buckram, let drive at me. What? Four? Thou saidest but two even now. Four, Al. I told thee four. Aye, aye, he said four. These four came all affront, and mainly thrust at me. I made no more ado, but took all their seven points at my target. Thus! Seven? Why, there were four even now. In Buckram? I four in Buckram suits. Seven by these hilts, or I'm a villain else. Prithee, let him alone. We shall have more anon. Dost thou hear me, Hal? Aye, and mark thee there too, Jack. Do so, for it's worth the listening to. These nine in Buckram that I told thee of. So, two more already? Their points being broken. Down fell their hose. Began to give me ground, but I followed me close. Came in foot and hand. With an end with a thought of seven of the eleven I paid. Oh, monstrous. Eleven Buckram men grown out of two. But, as the devil would have it, three misbegotten knaves in Kendall Green came at my back and let drive at me, for it was dark, so hell that thou couldst not see my hand, thy hand. These lies are like the father that begats them, gross as a mountain, open, palatable, 
Why, thou clay-brained guts, thou naughty-pated fool, thou whoreson, obscene, greased, callow, catch. What? Art thou mad? Art thou mad? Is not the truth the truth? Why, how cloudest thou know these men in Kendall green, when it comes so dark thou couldst not see thy hand? Come, tell us your reason, sayest thou to this. Come, your reason, Jack, your reason. What, upon compulsion? Zounds, and I were the strapado or all the wrecks in the world, I would not tell you on compulsion. Give you a reason on compulsion. If reasons were as plentiful as blackberries, I would not give no man a reason upon compulsion, I. I'll be no longer guilty of this sin, this sanguine coward, this bed presser, this horseback breaker, this huge hill of flesh, this blood, you starveling, you elf skin, you dried neat's tongue, you bull's piddle, you stockfish. Oh, for breath to utter what is like thee. You tailor's yard, you sheep, you bowcase, you vile standing talk. We'll breathe a while and then to it again, and then when thou hast tried thyself in base comparisons hear me speak but this mark jack we too saw you four set on four and bound them and were masters of their wealth mark now how plain a tale shall put you down then did we too set on you four, and with a word outfaced you from your prize, and have it, yea, and can show it you here in the house, and, false staff, you carried your guts away as nimbly with as quick dexterity, and roared for mercy, and still ran, and roared, as ever I heard bullcalf. What a slave art thou! to hack thy sword as thou hast done, and then say it was in fight. What trick, what device, what starting hole canst thou find out to hide thee from this open and apparent shame? Come, let's hear, Jack. What trick hast thou now? By the Lord, I knew ye as well as he that made it. Why, hear you, my masters, for it was me to kill the heir apparent? Should I turn upon the true prince? Why, thou knowest I am as valiant as Hercules, but beware, instinct, the lion will not touch the true prince. Instinct is a great matter. I was now a coward on instinct. I shall think the better of myself and thee during my life, I for a valiant lion, and thou for a true prince. But for the Lord, lad, I am glad you have the money. Hostess, clap to the doors, watch tonight, pray tomorrow, gallant lad, boys, hearts of gold, all the titles of good fellowship come to you. What? Shall we be merry? Shall we have a play extempore? <laughs> Content, and the argument shall be thy running away. Ah, no more of that, Hal, and thou lovest me. Oh, Jesus, my lord the prince. How now, my lady, the hostess? What sayest thou to me? Marry, my lord, there is a nobleman of the court at door would speak with you. He says he comes from your father. Give him as much as will make him a royal man and send him back again to my mother. What manner of man is he? An old man. What doth gravity out of his bed tonight? <laughs> oh, at midnight. Shall I give him his answer? Prithee, do, Jack. Faith, and I'll send him packing. Now, sirs, by a lady, you fought fair. So did you, Petto, and so did you, Bardolph, and you are lions too. You ran away upon instinct. You will not touch the true prince, no. Fie. Faith, I ran when I saw the others run. Faith, <laughs> tell me now in earnest how Falsat's sword came so hacked. Why, he hacked it with his dagger and said he would swear truth out of England, but he would be make you believe that it was done in fight, and persuaded us to do the like. Yeah, and to tickle our noses with spear grass and, 
make them bleed, <laughs> and then to be shrubber all the garments with it. And I swear it was the blood of true men. Well, I did that, and I did not the seven years before. I blush to hear his monstrous devices. <laughs> oh, no, villain. Thou stole us a cup of sack 18 years ago, and were taken with the manor, and ever since hast blushed extemporary. <laughs> thou hast fire and sword on thy side, and yet thou rannest away. What instinct hadst thou for it? Oh, my lord, do you see these meteors? Do you... Uh, behold these exhalations? I do. Oh, what think you they portend? Hot livers and cold purses? Collar, my lord, if rightly taken. No, if rightly taken, halter. Here comes lean jack. Here comes bare bone. How now, my sweet creature of bombast? How long is go, Jack, since thou sawest thine own knee? Mine own knee? When I was about thy years, Hal, I was not an eagle's town in the waste. I could have crept into any alderman's thumb ring. The plague of dying and grief, it blows a man up like a bladder. There's villainous news abroad. Here was the John Bracy from your father. You must to the court in the morning. That same mad fellow of the North Percy and he of Wales that gave him a mammon, the bastinado, and made Lucifer cuckold and swore the devil his true liegeman upon the cross of a Welsh hook. What a plague you call him? Oh, Glendower. Owen, Owen the same. And his son-in-law Mortimer and old Northumberland and that's quite Scott of Scots Douglas that runs the horseback up a hill perpendicular. He that rides at high speed with his pistol kills a sparrow flying. You have hit it. <laughs> so did he never the sparrow. Well, that rascal hath good metal in him. He will not run. Why, what a rascal art thou then to praise him so for running? A horseback, you cuckoo. But afoot he will not budge a foot. Yes, Jack. Upon instinct. I grant ye, upon instinct. Well, he's there too, and one more drink, and a thousand blue caps more. Worcester is stolen away tonight. Thy father's beard is turned white with the news. You may buy land now as cheap as stinking mackerel. Why then, it is like if there come a hot June and this civil buffeting hold, we shall buy maiden hens as they buy hobnails by the hundreds. By the mass, lad, thou say it's true. It is like we shall have good trading that way. But tell me how. Art thou not horrible afeard? Thou being heir apparent, could the world pick thee out three such enemies again as that steam Douglas, that spirit Percy, and that devil Glendower? Art thou not horribly afraid? Doth not thy blood thrill at it? Not a wit in faith. I lack some of thy instinct. Well, thou wert be horribly chid tomorrow when thou comest to thy father. If thou love me, practice an answer. Do thou stand for my father and examine me upon the particulars of my life? Shall I? Content. This chair shall be my stake, this dagger my scepter, and this cushion my crown. Thy state is taken for a joined stool, thy golden scepter for a leaden dagger, and thy precious rich crown for a pitiful bald crown. Well, and the fire of grace be not quite out of thee. Now shalt thou be moved. Give me a cup of sack to make my eyes look red, that it may be thought I have wept, <laughs> for I must speak in passion, and I will do it in King Camus's vein. Well, here's my leg. And here's my speech. Stand aside, nobility. Oh, Jesu, this is excellent sporty faith. If not, sweet queen, for trickling tears are vain. Oh, the father, how he holds his countenance. For God's sake, lords, convey my tristful queen, for tears do stop the floodgates of her eyes. Oh, Jesu, he doth it as it one, one of those harlotry players as ever I seen. Peace, good pine pot, peace. 
Good tickle brain, Harry. I do not only marvel where thou spendest thy time, but also how thou art accompanied. For though the chamomile, the more it is trodden on, the faster it grows. Yet youth, the more it is wasted, the sooner it wears. That thou art my son, I have partly thy mother's word, partly my own opinion, but chiefly a villainous trick of thine eye and a foolish hanging of thy nether lip that doth warrant me. If, if then thou be son to me, here lies the point. Why, being son to me, art thou so pointed at? Shall the blessed son of heaven prove a milcher and eat blackberry? A question not to be asked. Shall the son of England prove a thief and take purses? A question to be asked. There's a thing, Harry, which thou hast often heard of, and it is known to many in our land by the name of pitch. This pitch, as ancient writers do report, doth defile. So doth the company thou keepest. For, Harry, now I do not speak to thee in drink, but in tears. Not in pleasure, but in passion. Not in words only, but in woes also. And yet there is a virtuous man whom I have often noted in thy company, but I know not his name. What manner of man? And it like your majesty? A goodly, portly man, in faith, and a corpulent of a cheerful look, pleasing eye, and a most noble carriage, and as I think his age some fifty, or by a lady inclining to three score. But now I remember me, his name is Paul oh, Staff. Staff. If that man should be lewdly given, he deceiveth me. For Harry, I see virtue in his looks. If then the tree may be known by the fruit, as the fruit by the tree, then peremptorily I speak it. There is virtue in that Falstaff. Keep him with the rest banish. And tell me now, thou naughty varlet, tell me, where hast thou been this month? Dost thou speak like a king? Do thou stand for me, and I'll play my father. Depose me? If thou dost it half so gravely, so majestically, both in word and manner, hang me up by the heels for a rabbit sucker or a poulter's hair. Well, here I am, set. And here I stand. Judge, my master. I... Now, Harry, whence come you? My noble lord, police chief. The complaints I hear of thee are grievous. Blood, my lord, they're fault. Nay, I'll tickle ye for a young prince in faith. Swearest thou, ungracious boy? Henceforth ne'er look on me. Thou art violently carried away from grace. There is a devil haunts thee in the likeness of an old fat man. A ton of man is thy companion. Why dost thou converse with that trunk of humours, that bolting hutch of beastliness, that swollen parcel of dropsies, that huge bombard of sack, that stuffed clout bag of guts, that roasted manning tree ox with pudding in his belly, that revered vice, that grey iniquity, that ruffian, that father ruffian, that vanity in years, wherein is he good but to taste sack and drink it? Wherein neat and cleanly but to carve out a capon and eat it? Wherein cunning but in craft? Wherein crafty but in villainry? Wherein villainous but in all things? Wherein worthy but in nothing? I would, your grace, would take me with you. Who means your grace? That villainous, abominable, misleader of youth, Falstaff. Oh, that old white-bearded Satan. My lord, the man I know. I know thou dost. But to say I know more harm in him than in myself, or to say more than I know. 
that he is old, the more the pity his white hairs to witness it, but that he is saving your reverence a whoremaster, that I utterly deny. If sack and sugar be a fault, God help the wicked. If it be old and merry be a sin, then many an old host that I know is damned. If to be fat is to be hated, then Pharaoh's lean kind ought to be loved. Oh, my good lord, banish Peto, banish Bardolph, banish Point. But for sweet Jack Falstaff, kind Jack Falstaff, true Jack Falstaff, valiant Jack Falstaff, and therefore more valiant, being as he is, old Jack Falstaff, banish not him. Thy Harry's company, banish not him, thy Harry's company. Banish Pump Jack and banish all the world. I do. I will. Oh, my lord. Oh, my lord. Uh, the sheriff with the most monstrous watch is at the door. Out, you rogue. Play out the play. I have much to say in the behalf of that false staff. Oh, yes, sir. My lord. My lord. Hi, hi. The devil rides upon a fiddlestick. What's the matter? The sheriff and all the watch are at the door. They are come to search the house. Shall I let them in? Dost thou hear, Hal? Never call a true piece of gold a counterfeit. Thou art essentially mad without seeming so. And thou art a natural coward without instinct. I deny your major if you will deny the sheriff. If so, if not, let him enter. If I become not a card as well as another man, a plague on my bringing up. I hope I shall as soon be strangled with a halter as another. Go, hide thee behind the horus. The rest walk up above. Now, my masters, for a true face and a good conscience. Both which I have had, but their date is out, and therefore I'll hide me. Call in the sheriff. Now, master sheriff, what is your will with me? First, pardon me, my lord. A hue and cry hath followed certain men unto this house. Uh, what men? Uh, one of them is a well-known, my gracious lord, a gross, fat man. As fat as butter. The man, I do assure you, is not here. And for I myself at this time have employed him, and, Sheriff, I will engage my word to thee, that I will, by tomorrow dinner time, Send him to answer thee, or any man, for anything he shall be charged with all. And so let me entreat you to leave the house. I will, my lord. And there are two gentlemen have, in this robbery, lost three hundred marks. It may be so, if he had robbed these two men, he shall be answerable. And so farewell. Oh, good night, my noble lord. I think it is good morrow, is it not? Indeed, my lord. I think it be uh, two o'clock. This oily rascal is known as well as Paul's. Go, call him forth. Paul step, fast asleep behind the arras, and snorting like a horse. Hark! How hard he fetches breath. Search his pockets. What hast thou found? Nothing but papers, my lord. Let's see what they can be. Read them. Item. A capon. Item. Sauce. Item. Sack. Two gallons. Item. Anchovies and sack after supper. Item. Bread. Oh, monstrous. But one half penny worth of bread to this intolerable deal of sack? What else is there? Keep close. We'll read it at more advantage. There, let him sleep till day. All to the court in the morning. We must all to the wars, and thy place shall be honorable. I'll proceed this fat rogue, a charge of foot, and I'll know his death will be a march of twelve score. The money shall be paid back again with advantage. Be with me betimes in the morning, and so good morrow, Petro. Good morrow, good my lord. Act three, scene two. London, the palace, enter King Henry the Fourth, Prince Henry, and others. Lord, <laughs> give us leave. The Prince of Wales and I must have some private conference, but be near at hand, for we shall presently have need of you. I know not whether God will have it so. 
for some displeasing service I have done, that in the secret doom out of my blood, he'll breed revengement and a scourge for me. But thou dost in thy passage of life mark me, believe that thou art only mocked for the hot vengeance and the rod of heaven to punish my misreadings. Tell me else, could such inordinate and low desires, such poor, such bare, such lewd, such mean attempts, such barren pleasures, rude society, as thou art matched with all and grad, grafted to, accompany the greatness of thy blood, and hold their level with thy princely heart? So please, your majesty, I would, I could, quit all offenses with as clear excuse as well as I am doubtless I can purge myself of many I am charged with all. Yet such extenuation let me beg, as in reproof of many tales devised, which often the ear of greatness needs must hear, by smiling pick thanks and base newsmongers I may, for some things true, wherein my youth hath faulty wandered and irregular, find pardon on my true submission. God pardon thee. Yet let me wonder, Harry, at the affections which do hold a wing quite from the flight of all thy ancestors. Thy place in council thou hast rudely lost, which by the younger brother is supplied and art almost an alien to the hearts of all the court and princes of my blood. The hope and expectation of thy time is ruined, and the soul of every man prophetically doth forethink thy fall. Had I so lavish of my presence been, so comic hackneyed in the eyes of men, so stale and cheap to vulgar company, opinion that did help me to the crown, had still kept loyal to possession and left me in repute a Spanishment, a fellow of no mark nor likelihood. But being seldom seen, I could not stir, but like a comet, I was wondered at. That men would tell their children, there, this is he. Others would say, where, where is Boilingbroke? And then I stole all courtesy from heaven and dressed myself in such humility that I did pluck allegiance from men's heart, loud shouts and salutations from their mouths, even in the presence of the crowned king. Thus did I keep my person fresh and new, my presence like a robed pontifical, there seen but wondered at, and so my state seldom but sumptuous showed like a feast, and one by ran as such solemnity, the skipping king, he ambled up and down with shallow gestures and rash maven wits. Soon kindred and soon burnt carted his state, mingled his royalty with carpering, capering fools, had his great name profaned with their scorn and gave his countenance against his name, who laughed at gibbing boys and stand the push of every beardless vain comparative, grew a companion to the common streets. Effort, he offered himself to popularity that being daily swallowed by men's eyes, they surfeited with honey and began to loathe the taste of sweetness. Where of a little more than a little is by much too much. So when he had occasion to be seen, he was but as cuckoo is in June. Heard, not regarded, seen, but with such eyes, as sick and blunted with community, afford no extraordinary gaze, such as is bent on sun-like majesty when it shines seldom in admiring eyes, but rather drowned drowsed and hung their eyelids down, slept in his face and rendered such aspects as cloudy men used to their adversaries. Being with his presence glutted, gorged and full, and in that very line, Harry, standest thou, 
for thou hast lost thy princely privilege with vile participation. Not an eye, but is a weary of the common sight, save mine, which hath desired to see thee more, which now doth that I would not have it do, make bind itself with foolish tenderness. I shall hereafter, my thrice gracious Lord, be more myself. For all the world, as thou art to this hour, was richer then, when I from France set foot at Ravenspur, and even as I was then, is Percy now. Now, by my scepter and my soul to boot, he hath more worthy interest to the state than thou the shadow of succession. For of no right nor color like to right, he doth fill fields with harness in the realm, turns heads against the lion's arm and jaws, and being no more in debt to years than thou, leads ancient lords and reverend bishops on to bloody battles and to bruising arms. What never dying honor hath he got against renowned Douglas, whose high deeds, whose hot excursions and great name in arms holds them from all soldiers, chief majority and military title capital. Though all the kingdoms thus acknowledge Christ, thrice has this hot spur Mars in swarthing clothes, this infant warrior in his enterprises, discomfited great Douglas, tain him once, enlarged him and made a friend of him to fill the mouth of deep defiance up and shake the peace and safety of our throne. And what say you to this Percy, Northumberland, the Archbishop's Grace of York, Douglas Mortimer, Katip capitulate against us and are up. But wherefore do I tell thee news to thee? Why, Harry, do I tell thee of my foes, which art any nearest and dearest enemy? Thou that art like enough, though vassal fear, base inclination, and the art of spleen to fight against me under Percy's pay, to dog his heels and curtsy at his frowns, to show how much thou art degenerate? Do not think so. You shall not find it so. And God forgive them that so much have swayed your majesty's good thoughts away from me. I will redeem all this on Percy's head. And in the closing of some glorious day, too bold to tell you that I am your son, when I will wear a garment of all blood and stain my favors in a bloody mask, which, washed away, shall scour my shame with it, and that shall be the day wherein it lights that this same child of honor and renown, this gallant hotspur, this all-praised knight, and your unthought-of airy, shall chance to meet. For every honor sitting on his helm would they be multitudes and on my head my shame's redoubled, for the time will come that I shall make this northern youth exchange his glorious deeds for my indignities. Percy is but my factor, my good lord, to engross up glorious deeds on my behalf, and I will call him to so strict account that he shall render every glory up yea, even the slightest worship of his time, or I will tear the reckoning from his heart. This, in the name of God, I promise here, the which of he be pleased I shall perform. I do beseech your majesty may salve the long-grown wounds of my intemperance. If not, the end of life cancels all brands, and I will die a hundred thousand deaths ere break the smallest parcel of this vow. Hundred thousand rebels die in this, thou shalt have charge and sovereign trust with therein. And now, good Blunt, thy looks are full of speed. Though hath the business that I come to speak of, Lord Mortimer of Scotland, has sent word that Douglas and the English rebels met the eleventh of this month at Shrewsbury. A mighty and fearful head they are, if promises be kept on every hand, and is every offered foul play in the state. The Earl of Westmoreland set forth today. 
with him my son, Lord John of Lancaster, for this advertisement is five days old, and Wednesday next, Harry, you shall set forward. On Thursday, we ourselves will march. Our meeting is Bridge and North, and Harry, you shall march through Glockenshire, by which account our business valued some 12 days hence, our general force at Bridge North shall meet. Our hands are full of business. Let's away. Advantage feeds him fat while men delay. Scene three. Uh, excuse me. Off. Excuse me. I just got a uh, text message asking me if I could come over early, like now. So I'm going to ask somebody if they would take over. Uh, reading is sorry about this, but I got to go. Uh, okay. Hey, enjoy. Okay. Good luck, Peter. I will Good luck on the audition. I had fun tonight. Uh, good fun. Okay. Hope you memorize all your lines. <laughs> yeah. All, your line. my, all my one line. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Take care. Thank you. Remember, acting is reacting. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. Acting is real. It's real. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Scene three. East Cheap, the Boar's Head Tavern, enter Falstaff and Bardolph. Bardolph? Am I not fallen away vilely since this last action? Do I not bait? Do I not dwindle? Why, my skin hangs about me like an old lady's loose gown. I am withered like an old apple john. Uh, I'll repent. And that suddenly while I'm in some liking. I should be out of heart shortly, and then I shall have no strength to repent. And I have not forgotten what the inside of a church is made of. I am a peppercorn, a brewer's horse, the inside of a church. Company, villainous company, hath been the spoil of me. Sir John, you are so fretful that you cannot live long. Ay, uh, there it is. Come sing me a body song. Take me merry. I was as virtuously given as a gentleman need to be. Virtuous enough, wore little, diced not above seven times a week, went to a body house once in a quarter of an hour, paid money that I borrowed three or four times, lived well and in good compass, and now I live out of all order, out of all compass. Why, you are so fat, Sir John, that you must needs be out of all compass, <laughs> out of all reasonable compass, Sir John. <laughs> Do thou amend thy state, and I'll amend my life. Thou art our admiral, thou bearest the lantern in the poop, but tis in the nose of thee, thou art the knight of the burning lamb. Why, Sir John, my face does you no harm. Oh, I'll be sworn, I make as good a use of it as many a man doth of a death head or a memento mort. I never see thy face, but I think upon hellfire and dives that lived in purple, for there he is in his robes. Burning, burning, if thou wert any way given to virtue, I would swear by thy face, my oath should be by this fire, that God's angel, but thou art altogether given over, and wert indeed but for the light in thy face, the son of utter darkness. When thou rannest up Gadgil in the night to catch my horse, if I did not think thou had been an ignis, a tooth or a ball of wildfire, there is no purchase in money. Oh, thou art a perpetual triumph, an everlasting bonfire light. Thou hast saved me a thousand marks in links and torches, walking with thee in the night betwixt tavern and tavern. But the sack that thou hast drunk me would have bought me light as good chief as the dearest chandlers in Europe. I have maintained that salamander of yours with fire any time this two and thirty years. God reward 
happy for it? Some. <laughs> I would my face were in your belly. <laughs> God, mercy. So should I be sure to be heartburned. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh. no, Dame Partlet the Hen. Have you inquired yet who picked my pocket? Why, Sir John? What do you think, Sir John? Do you think I keep thieves in my house? I have searched. I have inquired. So has my husband. Man by man. Boy by boy. Servant by servant. The tithe of the hair was never lost in my house before. You lie, hostess. Bardolph was shaved and lost many a hair. And I'll be sworn my pocket was picked. Go to, you are a woman. Go to. Who, I? No, I defy thee. God's light, I was never called so in mine own house before. Go to, I know you well enough. No, Sir John, you do not know me, Sir John. I know you, Sir John. You owe me money, Sir John. And now you pick a quarrel to beguile me of it. I brought you a dozen of shirts to your back. Doubtless, filthy doubtless, I have given them away to baker's wives, and they have made bolters of them. Now, as I am a true woman, Holland of eight shillings an L, you owe money here. Besides, Sir John, for your diet and your by drinkings and money lent you four and twenty pounds. He had his part of it, let him pay. He, alas, he is poor, he had nothing. Ah, uh, poor? Look upon his face, what you call rich. Let them coin his nose, let them coin his cheeks. I'll not pay a denier. What, will you make a yonker of me? Shall I not take mine case in mine inn, but I shall have my pocket picked? I have lost a seal ring of my grandfather's worth forty marks. Oh, yes, I have heard the prince tell him. I know not how oft that... That ring was copper. Oh, the prince is a jack, a sneak cup, blood, and he were here, I would cudgel him like a dog if he would say so. Oh, uh, oh no, lad, is the wind in that door of faith? Must we all march? Aye, two and two, Newgate fashion. <laughs> My lord, I pray you, hear me. What sayest thou, mistress, quickly? How doth thy husband? I love him well. He is an honest man. Good, my lord, hear me. For thee, let her alone, and listen to me. What sayest thou, Jack? The other night I fell asleep here behind the arras, and had my pocket picked. This house is turned body house. They pick pockets. What dost thou lose, Jack? Wilt thou believe me how? Three or four bonds of forty pound apiece, and a seal ring of my grandfather. A trifle, some eight penny matter. So I told him, my lord, and I said I heard your grace say so, and my lord, he speaks most vilely of you, like a foul-mouthed man, as he is, and said he would cudgel you. What? He did not. There is neither faith, truth, nor womanhood in me else. There is no more faith in thee than in a stewed prune, no more truth in thee than in a drawn fox. And for womanhood, Maid Marian may be the deputy's wife of thee toward thee. Go, you thing, go. Say what thing, what thing? What thing, why, a thing to thank God on. I am no thing to thank God on. I would thou shouldst know it. I am an honest man's wife. And setting thy knighthood aside, Thou art a knave to call me so. Setting thy womanhood aside, thou art a beast to say otherwise. Say what beast, thou knave thou? What beast? Why, an otter. An otter, Sir John, why an otter? Why, she's neither fish nor flesh. A man knows not where to have her. Thou art an unjust man in saying that. Thou or any man knows where to have me, thou knave thou? Thou sayest true, hostess and he slanders thee most grossly. So he doth you, my lord, and said this other day you ought him a thousand pound. Sirrah, do I owe you a thousand pound? A thousand pound? Ha! A million. Thy love is worth a million. Thou owes me love. Nay, my lord, he called you Jack, and said he could cudgel you. 
Did I, Bartle? Indeed, Sir John, you said so. Yeah, if he said my ring was copper. I say, tis copper, darest thou be as good as thy word now? Why, how, thou knowest thou art but a man, I dare but as thou art prince. I fear thee as I fear the roaring of a lion's wealth. And why not as the lion? The king is to be feared as the lion. Dost thou think I'll fear thee? I fear. Dost thou think I'll fear thee as I fear the, thy father? Nay, and I do. I pray God my girdle break. Oh, if it should, how would thy guts fall about thy knees? But, sirrah, there's no room for faith, truth, nor honesty in this bosom of thine. It is all filled up with guts and midriff. Charge an honest woman with picking thy pocket. Why, thou horse and impudent embossed rascal, if there were anything in thy pocket but tavern reckonings, memorandums of body houses, and one poor penny worth of sugar candy to make thee long-winded, if thy pocket were enriched with any other injuries but these, I am a villain, and yet you will stand too, if you will not pocket up wrong, Art thou not ashamed? Dost thou hear, Hal? Dost knowest in the state of innocency Adam fell, and what should poor Jack Falstaff do in the days of villainy? Thou seest I have more flesh than other man, and therefore more frailty. You confess, then, you picked my pocket. It appears so by the story. Hostess, I forgive thee. Go. Make ready breakfast, love thy husband, look to thy servant, cherish thy guest. Thou shalt find me tractable to any honest reason. Thou seest I am pacified still. Nay, prithee, be gone. Now, how to the news at court for the robbery, lad, how is that answered? Oh, my sweet beef, I must still be good angel to thee. The money is paid back again. Oh... Do not like that paying back. It's a double labor. I am good friends with my father and may do anything. Rub me the exchequer the first thing thou doest, and do it with unwashed hands, too. Do it, love my lord. <laughs> I've procured thee, Jack, a charge of foot. Or would I have been given a horse? Uh, where shall I find one that I can steal well? <laughs> oh, for a fine thief of the age of two and twenty or thereabouts. I'm heinously unprovided. Well, I God be thanked for these rebels. They offend none but the virtuous. I laud them. I praise them. Bardolph. My lord. Go bear this letter to Lord John of Lancaster for my brother John. This I... is to my lord of Westmoreland. Go, Petro, to horse, to horse. For thou I have thirty miles to ride yet ere dinner time. Jack, meet me tomorrow in the chapel hall at two o'clock in the afternoon. There shalt thou know thy charge, and there receive money and order for their furniture. The land is burning, Percy stands on high, and either we or they must lower lie. Rare words, brave world. Hostess, my breakfast, come. Oh, I could wish this tavern were my drum. And we skip the next scene, and go to scene two.